Hello, beautiful souls. My name is Jesse, and welcome to my Tiny Talks podcast, the show where we'll dive into self love, inner child healing, and discovering your soul's purpose. I look forward to chatting with you every single Sunday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's Tiny Talk. Hello, you guys, and welcome back to another episode of Tiny Talks. We are on week 32 this week, and I am so excited to be on here chatting with you all. As always, it is a pretty windy day where I am today, so I'm hoping that this new mic keeps up with its quality of blocking out all those external background noises because I don't know where this wind and crazy weather has been coming from but we always have to have some good weather with the bad weather and we've been pretty fortunate where I live with lots of beautiful sunny days, sunshine, all those good things. So sometimes we need to have those rainy days to calm down those hotter days. But nonetheless, I'm hoping that it all works out and you guys are able to hear me crystal clear because I have so many things to share with you guys today. I have been sitting here for the past little while brainstorming in my journal because I thought that I was ready to go and I was flowing through what I was going to share with you guys today and then I just had so many other ideas bounce and come up and I was just really in that state of flow which is a state that I like to operate out of especially when I'm doing anything in my life that involves creativity or just involves passion or my purpose or whatever it is when we're operating out of that state of flow We know that it's coming from a good place and not from a place of feeling rushed or pushed or cramming or that mindset. So whenever I'm in a sense of flow and ideas are coming up, I like to just let it happen. And that's actually how this whole podcast idea had come to me. The subject for today is because I was in the bath last night and I was reading my book and this is actually my second time reading this book pretty much back to back because There's just so much incredible information in it. And so the book's called Discover Your Dharma by Sahara Rose. And if you know about my podcast, you know, like discovering your soul's purpose. So basically that is what finding your dharma means. Your dharma is your soul's purpose of why you are here because we are all here for a purpose. We all have a destiny and those things that we're supposed to do, which is exactly why we all resonate with things differently and we all pick different careers and You know, we all get persuaded into different areas for different reasons, and that's because our soul and our mission and our reason for being here, there's one thing for us. There's, There could be more than one thing, but we all have a reason of why we're here. And so when I was reading through this book um, last night in the bath, there was a particular section that came up, and in her writing, she just, I listen to her podcast as well, and so when I'm reading the book, I can really hear it in her voice. And there was a section that was asking a bunch of thought-provoking kind of self-awareness, getting to know yourself in the mindset of finding your dharma. And these questions were just like incredible of things that are so surface level, but any surface level question, if you really sit with it and dive deep and think about it for a bit, you can almost always get to a deeper answer or a deeper meaning behind the question. And so there was one particular question that she had asked that really just sparked a flow of things for me and just a bunch of ideas started coming up for me. And basically the question was, I love to help people with blank. And when I first read this question, there was a lot of things that came to my mind. A lot of things right off the bat. And that is a good indicator too of just like where your self-awareness is when you ask yourself those questions. But I love to help people with and just all these things came up for me and like when do I feel my best and I'm going to get into some of the questions with you later as well some questions that I came up with for you guys but the more that we ask ourselves those questions it just made me realize that when I do these things so speaking is one of them what do I love to help people with I love sharing I love sharing from my stories but one of the biggest things that came up for me when I read that question is I love that feeling when someone I can just feel like they've taken a deeper breath for the first time in a long time Whenever I'm having a conversation with someone, I always have on the back of my mind that I don't know where their capacity is at. You know, I don't know what they went through earlier today or yesterday or in their whole life, right? I don't know what this human being in my space has gone through and is dealing with. And so I always try to have in the back of my mind 
to help that person just feel seen and heard and validated and appreciated and holding space or whatever that is. And so when that question came up of what do I love to help people with, it's to let them know that any experience that you've gone through is valid. And I realized that when that was coming up in my subconscious mind and I was thinking about that, it kind of just clicked. Of That is exactly what my podcast is. That has been my reason for starting this podcast, even though I didn't realize it necessarily in the beginning. And that's sometimes the thing about our purpose is life just keeps throwing us in that direction. And we often don't know why. And then some days something just clicks and that might click of saying, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Or it might click in a negative perspective where you're like, I don't think this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But the more that we tap in and we listen to our intuition and we ask ourselves those questions, the more that we can get that feedback because we often just do the same things over and over and over again because it's a pattern, because it works, because it's comfortable, because we're used to it, because it's safe. Right. And so asking myself that that small question and sitting with it for a moment, I just had like a brain explosion moment of just like, aha, that's why I'm doing my podcast. I want people to feel and just know that whatever you've gone through, it's valid. I think we just live in such a society that we like to suppress Right? And we like to undermine things that we've gone through because how could we compare our reality to somebody else's reality that may seem a hundred times worse? But the thing is, and I've said it multiple times about trauma, is that trauma doesn't have anything to do with the event. The actual thing that happened isn't what determines the outcome. It's how the person experiencing it felt in that moment. Were you completely caught off guard? Right? Did it completely overwhelm your system? How did your body react? Was this a one-time instance? Was this multiple times? Right, And so remembering in the back of our mind that anything you've gone through that you might think isn't valid or isn't worth talking about because somebody has it worse or that mentality, just remember that that's also minimizing what you went through. And I think that by having that self-sabotage mindset, and I've gone, I've lived like this my whole life thinking, I've had, I had a great life, I had a great childhood, I had a great this, a great that, right? We try to just, it's all good, it's all good. But it doesn't mean that some of those memories and feelings and emotions that I went through don't matter. And it's crazy how that one question just made me want to scream it from the mountaintops of just letting every person know that you are valid. What you're feeling, if you're feeling it, means that it's true and that it's real. And I just want you to know that. If no one's ever told you that before or you've never felt like you had the permission to feel that before, I just want to give that. And it's crazy because a lot of these things just never used to come up for me. Like I've had such a huge shift and I would say... A matter of a year and that's another thing that she says in the book is that when we're discovering our purpose often one of the biggest ways that that happens is by taking a huge leap of faith by just doing something that completely scares us right getting out of our comfort zone and for me that was me last summer when I decided to quit my job get out of a three-year relationship and move across the country And in fact, at the time, I was so confused in what I was doing because I was just so taking a leap that in the span of a month, I had moved from where I was living in Alberta to a different place in Alberta to another place in Alberta, back to my original place to then packing up my truck and driving across the country. All within a month. So I took a huge leap of faith. And although at that time, I felt super on autopilot, very dissociative, very overwhelming, I just knew that it's what I was supposed to do. Something in me was just screaming that that is what I was supposed to do. And again, this podcast, I've, a lot of my episodes are about your inner child, right? Healing that inner child. And I really want to focus today on that, discovering your soul's purpose, listening and honoring your intuition. 
because your intuition will never lie to you. And so last summer, when I, even though I didn't have all the answers and I didn't know what I was doing and I was so scared and I didn't know what was to come, I now know that if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't be speaking with you guys. I would likely still be doing the same things, still in the same pattern, still in the same job, still living in the same place, feeling those same icky emotions that I have felt a lot, a vast majority of my life. And so when I took that leap of faith, it sent me on the trajectory to find my purpose. And I want you to ask yourself that. When's the last time you had like a life-changing moment or something that you've done on a leap of faith and it didn't guide you closer to your purpose, right? And I think that there's like this new culture now, especially since COVID came when unfortunately so many people had lost their jobs and people didn't know what they were gonna do. And so a lot of people who were laid off or were working from home, I was one of those people, decided to start a business. Think of all those years of distractions of going with the flow and how it took one pandemic to pause, to put reality in our face, to, to just realize that we're so not even guaranteed tomorrow. So why do we wait? So ask yourself that question that I read that just sparked all this for me. What is it that you love to help people with? And again, in a minute, I'm going to get into a couple other questions that I'm going to encourage you to dig deep with. And I know that I have some episodes on here about questions to ask yourself for self-awareness and and just developing that sense of self-love. But when's the last time you chased and craved what your purpose is? I guarantee you, your purpose isn't what you thought it was going to be in grade three, or maybe it was. Maybe you've known from such a young age what you were supposed to do. I know for me, I had no idea. In fact, me in public speaking and talking with others couldn't have been further apart. So for me, it took a lot of obstacles and at the time felt like severe, intense, dramatic, end of the world experiences. But again, I know that had I not gone through those, they wouldn't have set me to where I am today to be doing this. And a huge point that came up for me when I was just going through flow about this episode was that Really this last year, and I think about how much I've grown and and developed all this, is because I've spent it by myself. This was the first year that I've lived completely on my own. When I first moved out, I lived with an ex-partner. So this is my first time truly being by myself. And so I've kind of been forced to sit with my thoughts, sit with my brain telling me things, to get uncomfortable being alone. Because I'm definitely someone who doesn't strive very good being alone. I'm someone who likes to be in relationships, be with friends, be around people. But I've become just so obsessed with being alone and getting to know myself. Because I recognize that a large part of why I wasn't finding my purpose and what I was supposed to be doing is because my sense of who I was from my perception was based off of others' perceptions of who I maybe once was. And I'm learning that Only you get to decide how you want to portray yourself and so how others can portray you. You can quote unquote change at any time. I guarantee you, and this actually came up for me when I went for an interview at my newest job at a golf course and my manager had said she had asked around about me, right? It's a small town. Of course, you're going to ask around about people. But all that was going on in the back of my mind is, oh my gosh, like I'm not me in high school. I'm not who I was when I lived here six years ago, right? And so growth is so possible and growth is so necessary. And so asking those deeper questions and so spending that time by myself for the first time just allowed me to get comfortable with myself, to learn the things that are my pet peeves, to learn the things I want in a relationship, to learn what my love language is, to learn how I like to love other people, to learn how I naturally love other people, to learn what my triggers are, right? All those things that I just didn't pay attention to because I just so longed just to be with someone. And I'm recognizing now that until I'm just ready and I'll know when I'm ready and you'll know when you're ready and when you truly know yourself, that's when you can get really honest. And that's when you start to attract and bring things into your life that are in alignment with you that are operating at the same state of vibration as you. 
And I recognized that for so long that because I had suppressed everything, I kept attracting the same type of people and the same type of energies and the same type of job atmospheres and everything just felt the same and repetitive. And the common denominator was me and that I had to change. And so how does that sit with you? How do you feel about your friendships, your relationships, your jobs, your purpose, your passions? Are they what you think you are meant to have? Or do you think you are supposed to have something more? Are you longing for something more? I'm encouraging you to chase that, to let this be your sign, to intervene with that. It's never too late again to pivot. My theme word of 2022 has been pivot. Don't like something, pivot. It's not sitting well, pivot. Because it's not an absolute change. It's just switching directions, switching gears, looking at it from a different perspective. And so for the next couple of minutes, I just encourage you to sit with yourself for a moment as I go through some questions. And what really worked for me when I was doing this in the tub last night asking these questions was to truly just be by myself. Go somewhere that you can be in silence, be in quiet with yourselves, get rid of distractions for even five minutes. Maybe that's just even escaping to the washroom if that's all you can do. And I want you to just close your eyes and just picture your life right now for a moment and just sit with that. What's coming up for you? How are you feeling about your current life situation? Is there things popping up in areas that you just know you're not happy with but are putting off making a change? Is there habits that you've just gotten so used to but that you want to change? It only takes three weeks to change a habit. So thinking about your life right now for a moment bringing awareness to that. I now want you to take a big deep breath. Big breath in a four. And as you hold it, I just want you to bring awareness to your present body for a second. And as you exhale, I want you to just sigh it out. And when you sigh, I want you to imagine all those thoughts that you had just brought up for yourself. Any negative ones, just feel them physically release from your body when you exhale. And we're going to do that again. Exhale. And as you keep going through those deep breaths and bringing awareness, I want you to ask yourselves, this question. And when I read through these questions, I want you to try to turn off your ego brain and your your quick answer brain. And I want you to notice what just naturally flows to you without force. Because that's typically your higher self communicating with you. And through pretty consistently meditating for the last two years, I've gotten pretty good at shutting off my out loud voice and just listening to my inner heart voice. My famous saying, get out of your head and into your heart. So when I read this question, I want you to just notice what quickly comes up for you and how that aligns with your heart. And the question is, right now, I wish I was blank. Right now, I wish I was blank. And notice what comes up for you. Hold space for it. Honor whatever's coming up because it's coming up for a reason. The next question. The time I feel in my highest joy is blank. So the time that you feel in your highest sense of joy, high vibration, feel the best. For me, that's podcasting. For me, that's sharing and using my voice and being with other people. What is that for you? What brings you optimal joy? Maybe it's your kids. 
Maybe it's your job, your business. Maybe it's a place. Maybe it's a hobby. Whatever it is. Number three, I want to impact the world with blank. Or I want to leave the world with blank. How do you want to leave the world? How do you want to leave your trace? What does that mean? Remember, pull from your heart. Number four, I'd spend every day doing blank. What's something that you could do absolutely every day that you just love to do and every time you do it, you just feel so good and so much better? And number five, and again, please, I encourage you to write these down and go through these again because I am going fairly quick. This exercise took me almost an hour to get through. So number five, I am ready to blank. That is a huge question. What are you ready to do now? What are you ready to start now? And the theme with all those questions is that they really give you an inside perspective of what you maybe didn't even realize that you were wanting or needing or chasing or craving. But your body and your mind and your heart and your soul knows. It's about tapping into them and listening to them, again, without distractions, without ego, without others' biases and perceptions and perspectives. One of those questions sent me down such an incredible, life-changing, eye-opening rabbit hole. So take the time and go through those questions sincerely, again, with just yourself. Get into your body. Get into your heart. And dig deep. Our body holds so much of our truth because the thing about our purpose and our mission and just everything that we're supposed to do, we know it deep down. Life circumstances have just unfortunately pulled us away and almost in a sense made us forget. And so it's about remembering. And when we ask those questions of what brings us joy, what makes us happy, what would we do every day and how do we want to impact the world? Those are all very key indicators of things that you are supposed to be doing. Because if for all those answers, none of those things are resonating or are active in your life right now, that could highly be why maybe you're feeling burnt out, drained, done, ready to give up, feel like like there's just no purpose. Pull from those things that you already know that you just told yourself feel good. Do them often. Be open to see where they can take you. Everything is an endless opportunity, but we have to be willing to hold space and to open up to it and to avoid blocks. I truly hope that this activity and just recognizing that we do all have a purpose and sometimes it is about finding it is just such a beautiful journey to be on because it allows you to pay more attention and be more observant and notice more things. Because when we're living in our dharma, in our purpose, our body is just at such a high state of love and vibration and just free because that's what you're supposed to be doing. And I definitely 100% recommend reading the book, Discover Your Dharma and checking out Sahara Rose's podcast. She has absolutely transformed my life and and I think I've said it before on my podcast is largely one of the reasons that I felt pulled to start a podcast. And so her podcast is called The Higher Self Podcast. And I just so resonate with that, with becoming your higher self, becoming, if you're not spiritual, just the best version of yourself, of doing the things that make you happy and spark joy. I wanna thank you guys so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. I truly hope you enjoyed this week's content. I'm really feeling pulled to share more stuff like this and to tap more into your purpose and just ways to find that, but it does all start with healing your inner child and doing things that make you happy and doing that deeper inner mirror work. I would love to hear your feedback. I would love to connect as always. You can find me on Instagram at jessiebrown13. I would love to hear how this resonates with you. If you had any eye-opening opportunities or experiences when asking yourself these questions, I would love to hear about it if you're open to share. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Bye, you guys. 
Thank you all so, so much for tuning into this week's episode of Tiny Talks. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next week. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.